Hi everybody and welcome to this short video from the Diploma in Photography course from Shaw Academy on the beginnings of photography. You are here with myself, William Eames, the educator on the photography courses here in Shaw Academy. And I put together this short video on the beginnings of photography in relation to the first lesson on the Diploma in Photography course where we spoke a little bit about the history of photography in terms of understanding how the camera works and how exposure works in our cameras as well. Photography is a result of the combination of several different technological discoveries long before the first cameras or even the deed, the first photographs were made, you know, ancient Greeks and ancient uh, Chinese philosophers and mathematicians, you know, described pinhole cameras and the idea that you could project an image on the other side of a room by passing light through a small opening. So the concept of a camera has been around for nearly 2,500 years and this idea was used to develop a camera obscura which you spoke about a little bit on the first lesson. And the camera obscura was developed, you know, around the 11th um, century and kind of, you know, improved then throughout the Renaissance, you know, between the 15th and the 16th centuries. And it allowed artists and mathematicians to reproduce the images it re um, projected accurately. As you can see here, you know, in the diagram, the artist would have stood in a box you know, with the pinhole in the front of the box, projecting the outside onto the inside and allowing the artist to trace over the subject to get the proportions and the light and the shade all correct. Now, with this idea, you know, scientists were looking for a way to be able to record the image and to make that image permanent and experimented with lots of different chemicals to try and produce this. And in 1725, a physicist, a German professor of autonomy and physics, Johann Heinrich Schultz, discovered that a change in the colour of mixture of silver nitrate and chalk was caused by sunlight and not by heat, as was previously taught. This was from leaving... Um, a, a bottle containing the silver nitrate and chalk by a window unintentionally in the path of incoming light from the sun. Now the mixture turned dark but what he found to be strange was that there was still part of it that was white, a white line that formed across the bottle. What Schultz observed was a cord hanging down from the window and it was going across the front of the window which he found out was the cause. So with this big discovery this led um, scientists to explore this and experiment even further and in 1826 or 1827 a another scientist Joseph Nishp um, created the first photograph or what we consider the oldest photograph what he called the heliograph and it's still in existence today. This is an eight hour exposure of a view of a building. This is the view from Le Gras and it's the oldest surviving image in the world formed by a camera and it was in and around 1826 or 1827. Now with this discovery, Nish, it visited the painter Louis-Jacques Mandé de Guerre who was also trying to figure out how to capture images from the camera by the spontaneous action of light. And as a scenic painter, Louis de Guerre was very familiar with the camera obscura. Now, in 1839, the first daguerreotype was shared with the world, and this indeed was the first photograph to contain a person in it as well. Um, as you can see here, this gentleman getting his shoes shined is generally accepted as the earliest photograph to include people, this view of the busy street. But because the exposure lasted for several minutes, the moving traffic left no trace. Only the two men near the bottom left of the corner. One of them apparently having his shoes uh, buffed by uh, another. They remained long in place enough to be visible in the shot. Now around this time as well, 
Another scientist, William Henry Fox Talbot, almost accidentally discovered a photographic system independently working in England. He too was in uh, was frustrated by his inability to draw well and use the camera obscura. And he imagined how nice it would be if the camera obscura could be imprinted durably and remain fixed on paper. And his experiments created a negative using sodium chloride and silver nitrate. So this was the negative as we would be familiar with with our film photography. This was a huge discovery because this meant that we could reproduce the photograph over and over and over. Unlike the daguerreotype which was a single exposure, a single print. So in 1841, Talbot announced an improvement to this photogenic drawing process and the callow type, uh, which meant beautiful picture. This developed a latent image onto a sheet of film like this and was able to be brought out using chemicals. This created negatives which were then used to make positives and he patented this on February the 8th in 1841. So that was a very brief introduction into the beginnings of the history of photography really only scratching the surface there uh, but just to give you some kind of insight of the earliest beginnings of photography as we know it today and enjoy it today as well. Thank you very much for joining me for this. I will see you all back for your next lesson in Diploma in Photography very soon. Thank you.